Well, here we are back at Rocket Industries once again, so let's go inside and take a look around. I want to talk to you about carburetors. Check out this Dominator here, it'd look fantastic on your mantelpiece, wouldn't it? What an awesome looking carb. Now, when it comes to carburetors, it's very important to make sure that you size it correctly. We'll talk about your average, say, four to 500 horsepower small block V8. Now, in most cases, you'll run between a 750 and 850 CFM on that type of configuration. But different engines come in different sizes, so it's very important to make sure they are sized correctly. Now, there are lots of calculations about, if you have a look on the net and search around, I'm sure you'll find them, that you can punch in the specifications of your engine, the given size and also the RPM range that you're going to use, and you'll get something that's pretty close. But it is very important not to oversize your carburetor. Many people out there think that bigger is better, but it's all about airspeed at a given engine speed. So if you go for a giant carburetor like this 1150 Dominator here on say a 350 small block that's making around 400 horsepower, you'll find that thing will be quite unresponsive and probably lack power in the low to mid range. You might only make a little bit more power upstairs compared to say a 750 or something like that, but overall a 750 would be a far better choice for that sort of application, maybe even a 650. So sometimes think on the smaller side to get the throttle response you're looking for and the overall drivability. Now when it comes to carburetors versus modern day fuel injection, they're two different kettles of fish, but don't discount the carb. Fuel injection, a proper fuel injection system does give you quite a bit of flexibility in ignition timing and fueling and many other areas. The drivability is almost very, very hard to beat. But a good carb these days has a lot of tunability and you can tune that thing to get the perfect air fuel rate show through all RPM ranges and all driving loads and get them pretty close. But there is one advantage that I do like with the carb versus fuel injection. Yes, with an injector down close to the inlet port, you do get advantages, you do get pretty good atomization down there, but the good old carb, when she's sitting right up on top, up high on that manifold, it actually does get incredibly good fuel atomization because by the time it gets down to the inlet port, it's atomized perfectly. Now as an example, your modern day V8 supercar runs fuel injection, right? But it actually runs the injector right up high in the trumpet. Same as Formula Ones, they do the same thing. Now the reason they do that is because by the time the fuel does get down through that intake runner, down into the intake port, the fuel has atomized to absolute perfection, therefore providing a better burn and more horsepower. The only downside is with the injector sitting right up there, if you had a backfire or something like that, there is a danger of fire, and that's why you don't see that sort of setup on a road car. So what I'm saying here in a nutshell is the good old car is sitting up high doing the same thing as that injector on that Formula One and that V8 supercar. So when it comes to making power, don't discount the carb. They're still not a bad thing.